Hi, and welcome to Submarine Wednesday on Relaxing Painting with Dyson Dungeons. A couple of minutes late because um, when I came down and tried to turn things on, they didn't turn on. And then Alexis came down and just looked at it and they all came on again. So sometimes I have that effect, apparently, that um, electronic things simply don't work. And then when someone comes down to help, boom, they're working anyway. Um, so if you might recall, I'm going to try to, this camera, you know, I don't know, sideways, is that, is that okay? I'm going to move it up a little bit because the parts are in the tray here. Um, these are the parts for the torpedo room and the sail of the submarine. So... Yeah, all of these things. Um, and I, I got started a couple of weeks ago getting them base coated, uh, experimenting with different colors, you know, figuring out how to get this paint, this color paint to work on the racks and some of the other mechanical parts. And that turned out okay. Uh, started to paint a little bit of the detail. This one is easy, you know, there's a stairs and some fire extinguishers. And on the other side is the bathroom. <laughs> this is the top part here. I keep rotating this. There's a floor that goes across here. And yeah, these are toilets and toilet paper. And then this um, is adjacent to the uh, one to a uh, yeah a cafeteria kind of thing, the mess hall. That's what that is. And so, yeah, I painted a little bit of detail on here. Um, I discovered that on the door, there's a window and a handle. And I'm going to try to paint the detail in on those today um, using, a, using some pens. Pens and pins. Okay, so these are pretty straightforward. And this is, this is the bulkhead. It's flipping, it's flip, flip, flipping sub Wednesday. Yes, it is. I need to remind everybody who keep reminding everybody all through this stream that it's sub Wednesday and sub can stand for all sorts of things. One of which is submarine and the other of which is, I'm sure you'll tell everyone. Anyway, this is the bulkhead to which uh, the, these torpedo racks attach and this set of bunks. Whoop, did I just it over here um this this turns out actually to be fairly complicated to paint i was surprised at that but uh when i looked at the box top which is going to be my color guide uh there's the color that goes around the outside which is the, a light green that you'll be seeing and then there's a little bit of a floor and then there's the frames for the beds and then there's the extremely comfortable looking um bunks which will be a little bit hard to paint because, as you can see, there's not much room in there. So I'll be painting, um, I might just paint the shell last because I have to hold on to it somehow. You know, the floor and the frames, I think I'll do the frames and then the floor, and then I have to do the sheets last because to get the, the bent frame color yeah, with this camera rotated. Uh, which is nice for seeing things. There we go. You can see that you have to get the paint deep down in there and then try to paint the sheets on top of it. We'll see, you know, we'll use up my skill level on that. The real challenge, though, is this. This is the forward torpedo room bulkhead. And the designers decided that, okay, well, this detail is fine, right? Even that. But no, they, they did the torpedo doors. Uh, there's a clock there. The rotate it so that they, yeah. The, the fire extinguishers there, that's right side up for you. Um, so there's torpedo doors, one of which is open. Then there's this 
square thing there with a clock on it. And above that are some dials. And there's a whole bunch of like wires, conduits, I guess. Um, other control panel surfaces and things of that sort. And I am going to probably spend the better part of half of my lifetime now um, trying to get as much of that detail as I can. I definitely want to get these boxes painted, uh, contrasting color, and I'm going to try to capture the clock and these gauges as much as I can. Um, like here, there's one there and there, so those will be white and maybe I'll try to put black pointers on them, certainly black uh, uh, raised edges around them, that, like the bezel. Um, I'm not quite sure what to do about the wiring of uh, that. I mean, I could pretend that, okay, it's just a raised surface, and when they painted this in real life, they just painted that the same color. Or what I could try to do, and I'm going to try, is to um, is to delineate that. And I've got a couple of things I can do. I have a very fine-tipped paintbrush. I could try to do it that way. But I also have um, these extremely fine-pointed, like a half a millimeter, or like 0.005. 20% of a millimeter or something fine felt tip pen that I can try and I also have some graphite pencils with a fine point on it that might be a last resort I tried these a little bit and they make a really nice fine line when it's sharpened uh, but it's it's charcoal and so it um, it can rub off really easily Anyway, uh, this will be a challenge, and I'm going to give it a go. Um, see how much of this I can do uh, over time. I have to pick some colors for these control boxes. I think I'll pick the same color for all of them. Uh, just it'll just be the things that look like dials, okay, all around here. Those will be painted white with a black rim. And we'll see what I can do about the internal detail. The other challenge, since, you know, I always try to avoid painting on relaxing painting, is that these escape hatches, this is a conduit, this is a, not, this is an escape hatch here, okay, it goes up in the very, very top of the torpedo room, and this is access up through the sail, and they have these little ladders in them. And I'm going to use the fine felt pen on those ladders to highlight them. And if that works, I'll use the same technique on this ladder that goes up to these extremely not comfortable bunks. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with some easy things, though. Uh, the torpedoes need a second coat of paint because it did, it just didn't come out very evenly. See, I mean, you can you can see that even even there that it just isn't. Um, it just isn't very even. And <clears throat> these are the, way over here, the periscopes and snorkels and radio antenna and things. And after due consideration, I decided that, in fact, you would not want shiny stuff sticking up out of the water when you're a submarine trying to hide. So the very top of these, this bit up here, there's an indentation I'm going to paint dark gray which is the hull color even though it might be a little jarring to see the transition from chrome to that it makes some sense to me because um, that would be less visible and there's no sense there's no need for that top to be chrome it makes a lot of sense for this to be chrome because it's like a hydraulic slide that goes in and out of um, in and out of a tube and in fact literally that is the case with some of these like this they go in here and they actually in the model slide okay so what i'm hoping to do today is um get the base coat of green on here 
Okay, the inside of the torpedo room on the box top is, is and the painting directions is green. Let's go, it goes this way, I guess, yep. Um, this is where the escape hatch goes up here, right there. I didn't paint the top of it. The top of it will be painted the hull color. And then uh, the torpedo racks go in here, like there. Sad. And then this will get painted green here, this. I'm not going to paint this side yet, because as you can see, some of these, this is where the bunks go in. And this is where the this thing goes in here. Um, they poke through onto the other side. And what I want to do is get that all assembled and then fill in these holes and sand them down so you can't see them when the model's put together. What I will do on this one, though, is uh, do something on the little door handle here and this tiny spot where there's a window in the door. Apparently, so when it's closed, you can look through it and make sure you're not slamming it into somebody on the other side. Yeah. So, the other thing I discovered is that uh, I've already pulled out, what, like 16 different colors just for these two rooms and some of the others that I'll be working on. And the color chart, I think, has six or seven colors on it. And... Uh, when I first put this together back when I was in grade school, the original one, um, I probably was working with a color palette of like eight different testers enamels. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting torpedoes warhead first into the sticky tack to hold them. Well, I then put a second coat on them. The warheads get painted red later. And when I paint, redo the second coat, periscopes and snorkels and things, I'm going to be using an alligator clip and just clipping them onto the top here. The top here, where I'll be painting those different. Uh, the hull color instead of chrome. And then I will be, before I start working on green, I'm going to begin to paint in the surface of some of the detail on this piece. I'm going to paint the uh, access doors, the hatches, torpedo tube hatches steel which is a dark metallic color and then I'm going to paint the dial faces white there's like four of them one of them's partially covered down here and then um, I'm going to paint the control I'm really torn about that um, I might just paint them green to begin with and then uh, paint them a separate color later just the raised surfaces they're they're not raised very much at all and so I'll probably just paint across the tops of them with some sort of appropriate uh, appropriate color for control boxes yeah, anyway, I'll be doing that, and I'll be painting um, the four different colors on this guy. Uh, okay, I was going to paint the, the bed frames, and then the floor, and then the sheets, and then the outside of it, right? So green will be coming in late in the game. 
And in between that, I'll be taking out the very fine, this, this gets painted green too, the very fine tipped um, bell tip pen and attempting to paint, not paint, but um, highlight the ladders in these two guys. Oh, let's see, I've got five of these. I'm going to clip these on right away. Sorry, we rotated the camera, which gives a better field of view, but as you, if you'd watched on Monday, you would have seen that it's uh, a little bit confusing in terms of which way things need to move to keep them on camera. Not that I keep things on camera very anyway, but yeah, doing our best here. Yep, and doing, doing our best isn't very good at all, apparently. <laughs> that just, uh, you know, this is on camera. Okay. I'm just going to move the whole self over, I think. So um, there's five alligator clips. I keep saying I should get more. I actually looked them up. And uh, for these kinds of clips, the you, you buy 50 or 100, right? I mean, they don't come in little quantities. Let's see, there you get 50 or 100 of them. So at some point, I guess I'll be getting like 100 because the quantity discount is quite substantial. I'm trying to... Uh, get two of these in this one at the same time. We'll see how that works. I'm doing this bit first uh, because it's uh, early in the morning and Try to do a couple of things that don't require me to magnify my head yet. And that's what I'll be doing next. Okay, well, we've got um, torpedoes, snorkels, periscopes, things like that. Those will be painted first. Um, I will start with these guys. And then I'll be able to just take this and put it aside. The okay. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I haven't done a flip yet. These are all nicely in a tray, which means that I can take the whole tray and all the parts. And if I'm very careful, I can set them aside without dropping them all over the floor, maybe. If not really anything to do with gems, it has, those are my color charts in here. Um, now clear the way for a flip. We're going to do a big flip today. I haven't used this yet. So it's uh, just spattered, but it doesn't have wet paint on it. So we'll flip that. It was a pretty good dramatic flip, wasn't it? We'll even do another one. Here we go.
But the rate I'm planning to go today, I'm not sure I'll be assembling anything. Uh, but if I do, it will probably be the torpedo racks. Those have to come in first. And I was uh, speculating about thinking about what kind of adhesive to use on these because the the model cement that one would ordinarily use um, won't adhere to painted surfaces it'll just melt the paint and make a mess and so um, one way to do that would be to scrape off little bits of paint on all of these but I like the way they look I don't want to mess with it so I've got epoxy I've got super glue, I've got contact cement, and I've got uh, gorilla, clear gorilla glue. They all have advantages and disadvantages, right? The epoxy would hold really well, regardless of the painted surface, as long as the paint holds and it seems to be adhering well. Um, but it, uh, it's really thick, and so it's hard to control where it goes. The contact cement has to be on both con on both points, and a torpedo like this, you know, can rotate, and so getting it on both points exactly right so that they touch each other is uh, something more than I want to mess with. Super glue, you just have to put little tiny dots on the the racks, and then set the torpedo onto it but once it touches you can't really move it very much so i'm thinking i'm going to try the clear gorilla glue that takes an entire 24 hours to set so the advantage is i can move them around a little bit okay i don't want to rotate them because then the glue would show but if i set it down i want all of the torpedoes to extend the same distance in the front of the rack which according to the instructions um, be sure to have the nose of the torpedoes overlap the edge of the racks by at least a sixteenth of an inch to allow for clearance and assembly. So when the torpedoes go on, I'll just show you one here, I'll pull it out of the thing. The torpedoes go on like that. Rack. See what I mean about you want to just set it on there but this has to be a sixteenth of an inch over, so I'm going to be aiming probably for about that much, but I want all 12 of them to be the same, so the Gorilla Glue will let me, with tweezers, very carefully be able to move them little bits back and forth like that, um, so that they all line up. Anyway, I'm going to give that a try. Once it dries, it holds pretty well, so other than the delay, which for me will not be a problem because I'm trying to delay a lot of things here today. Anyway, uh, yeah, it'll be that. So here, I'm going to start with these things because they're just easy and it'll get me in the mood for painting in a relaxing way without, you know, being unrelaxed and do the chrome and the uh, aluminum what I'm using. Yeah. Uh, then I'm going to paint in some of the detail on this guy and let it dry. And while that's drying, I'm going to be starting to paint these, the colors in on this, the bed frames, and then the floor, and then the sheets, and then the outside. And in an interim between things, um, be trying to highlight the ladders. Okay, here and here. Oh, one other thing I need to get uh, is the, the hull. Okay, the torpedo room is assembled. Look at that, I rotated it correctly. The torpedo room is assembled, and then uh, the assembly, once it's put together, is installed into the submarine hull. 
but the sail, the sail uh, is glued directly into the hull here on the top. And so this part of the hull needs to be painted the wall color, which in this case, according to the directions in the box top is green. So I'm gonna have to, when I get the green paint out, see, you know, helpful instructions here. Green, right? They don't tell you what to paint any of these at all. This is tan, yeah. So I'm gonna have to Yep. So after this is all assembled, it goes in here and then that torpedo bulkhead goes in the front and the escape hatch goes on. Anyway, I'm going to have to go over there and get the hull so that I can paint the um, inside of the sail. Yeah, I'm getting a pretty good effect here. Good rave effect. That what we're getting today um, for the first half hour, that's pretty good. I killed an entire half hour before I started painting. Yeah, I don't know. It's probably it's still copyrighted. The uh, Gilligan's Island theme, you know. Sit right back and hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip. Okay, well, that's enough uh, wasting time doing that. I'm just going to put this up here. Drops of chrome paint. And then I'm going to um, yeah, chrome paint these, I guess. That's what I'm that's what I'm doing here. So if it looks like I'm having trouble seeing today, it is because I am. What has happened is that a couple of I thought it was like a month ago, right? because that's what it felt like. But it turns out to be like three months ago, I got a new pair of glasses. And just a little bit, I'm gonna have to adjust the camera later when I start painting some of the re de real detailed detail stuff, like the, this thing because I'm going to paint it while it's laying flat. Anyway, yeah, I got these new glasses, and one of the lenses, I'm not sure what the problem was, but it just... Okay, well, I'll see you in a second. That was going well. The paint was flowing. It was covering nicely. Um, but yeah, now I've got this. Let paint. <sighs> okay, what I did the first time, and I mean, and I'll repeat the process, is. Um, This paint dries fairly quickly is that in fact I am going to paint this one while it is clipped on here fortunately it appears not to have accumulated too much cat hair I don't know how this will look when it's dry but it's looking much better now than it did with the first coat 
is hopefully that will dry and then I'll be able to take that one off and put the other one on. Anyway, I got new glasses and uh, one of the lenses just isn't focusing very well. So I took them back to see what they could do about that. And I'm wearing my old pair and I'm going to have to take them off because at this distance, the only part that focuses is the very, very bottom of the lens here. I think that, why don't you just do that? Who is, um, is we could have like a chest timer, you know, one of those punch clock kinds of things is so that you can turn it on and off is we could time how many minutes i mean even seconds i suppose i actually spend painting on relaxing painting as opposed to looking for colors dropping things on the floor procrastinating while i talk about something irrelevant Ugh. yeah those As I make compromises in my vision. Yeah. Fuzzy, do I want things to look at what distance? So yeah, you could get one of those chess clocks and we could keep track of, of the approximately often, well, usually about four hours of stream, including the break because it goes from 10 until 2, and that's four hours. So how much of that time is actually spent painting? And then what we can do is average that over an extended, you know, series of streams. and I get an average amount of painting time. And then we could do truth in advertising. We could call it relaxing painting 47% of the time with Dyson Dungeons. You know, how does that sound? You could try something like that. One of the startling things so far is that uh, this has been mainly on camera. One way to do that is, and I did this on Monday, I should have, you know, remembered that is, um, I can find, I can see what's in the center. This thing is in the center of the camera. So if I keep what I'm doing, above, in this case, the uh, landmark. You know, see that one doesn't, this one wasn't painted very well at all the first time, but the second coat is, is going okay. And as I said, I'm cl I just clipped the tops of these because I decided after thinking about it, this was one of those like 19th century science things you know, where you never really did any observations or experiments, but you just thought you read some books maybe, or you looked at a picture in a book because somebody else did it once. They, they went out and looked at something or, or they thought about it and wrote about it anyway. Um, you know, so you did, I did one of those 18th, I guess 18th century um, research by thinking about what color these would be on a submarine and decided that it made no sense with the part that protruded above the surface to be bright chrome. It made 
a lot of sense for the part underneath to be because just like with hydraulics, you know, it needs, it needs to be very shiny and smooth so that it moves freely in the tube, <clears throat> but that the part above water, it made no sense for that to be shiny because that would just give it a, give yourself away. Sunlight would reflect on it and things like that. So I decided that this, these bits up at the top here, I'm going to paint the dark gray hull color. So at some point when I remember that, I'm going to come back to these and take, you know, take them off the clip and I think that bit. Well, that does look better. I'm going to have to take it off now. And hopefully that won't be a problem. We'll do this last one. So, yep, I did my my 18th century research by just thinking about it without actually doing any real review or I didn't look anything up, didn't go on the internet, didn't, didn't do any of those things that one would do in later centuries, but just made up an answer that seemed to make sense. And that's, that's the way it'll be. Okay, so these are now shinier than they were before. I'm going to take this whole bit and set it aside. Things around and over. Oh, yeah, one other thing. This is what I'm going to do right now. Okay. Since I have the chrome paint out. As I've mentioned before, that in the highly detailed door here, there is this little round bit that you can see there. That's a window. And they went through all the trouble of putting that window in the door. Um... What I'm looking for is this really nice big pin is I'm going to make an effort to put a little bit of the chrome paint on the tip of the pen, pin and get that into the center of where that window is. is that uh, the paint paint doesn't adhere to the pin <laughs> so we will use a toothpick instead nice little pointy toothpick yep <clears throat> There. Look at that. See? <clears throat> I got the rim a little bit. But I, I wanted to show, so I, I'm going to call that a success. <clears throat> and since I've got this in my hand, I'm going to take this red pen. See the handle here? There's a handle on the door. Is I'm going to... Thing tipped tip cap. Because so I can touch just the raised surface without going over.
if just on the edge here, the edge of the handle. <clears throat> I know that they make they make pens that you can load with paint. Those of you who are real painters, as opposed to me, probably have those. And those look at pretty cool things, because you could take any paint color and put it into a pen like this, and then be able to do that, which is really hard to do with a brush. Okay, well, it's not perfect, but you can now see... the window and the the handles on the door it's the edge just the you know the handle goes across but it's just the edges of the handle so you can see it okay I'm, I'm okay with how that turned out <clears throat> okay um, what I'm using now is the slightly darker color for the torpedoes. I'm using what's called Dur Aluminium because this is uh, European and they don't have aluminum in Europe. They have aluminium. <clears throat> That's true in Canada too. I guess we're the, we're the odd person out, the odd country out. So this is a slightly darker color. Um, lighter than dark aluminum and much lighter than steel and i'm going to use this to second coat all of these the dozen torpedoes that we've got going here let's see so yeah i did some detail and it's not bad Drops of this. I'll use the same brush I was using before. I don't know if you can see it, but this is darker than that. It's got more black pigment in it than the metal. <clears throat> and let's see where the center. There we are. I'm, I'm marking. What I'm doing there is marking where the camera is so I'll put my things I'm painting above that I can yeah I can tell pretty quickly that second coating these is a really good idea Part of what's happening here is that I, you know, I didn't see it at all when I was doing it, but I sanded these pretty heavily because there were mold marks on them. And I was using a pretty fine grain of sandpaper, but um, it's not polished. The surface is not a polished surface now and so that's part of the reason why it looks like it does when it was painted what i should have done but i didn't was um get out like the 800 grit sandpaper and polished all of these before i started painting them live and learn but it's And I'm going to have to try to remember which way I rotate this because the wet paint and the dry paint don't look terribly much different from each other. 
So this is the third one. And I'm rotating it counterclockwise and away from me is what I'm doing. It's this little double ring here and I'm going to decide. I think I'm going to paint the warhead just up to the first one of the two. When I finally getting around, get around eventually, and it will happen eventually, is that I'll be painting the warheads, the warheads of the torpedoes red. Because that's what the instructions say and what the box top shows. So it must be right. Come on. At least this is fairly relaxing. You know, just putting dur aluminium paint on torpedoes. painting. Have you been keeping track? Am I repainting things I already repainted? Or are you just so relaxed that you weren't really paying attention? Oh my. Look at that. That is like a little piece of cat hair there. Like wrapped entirely around the torpedo. You know, but it's not good. being very successful in grabbing it here either. Okay, well, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to wipe this off. Hopefully I can get that off, but I'll just repaint it again. You probably couldn't see that, but there was uh, what looked like a cat hair on... Um, in that particular torpedo. Not very authentic, I'm guessing. You know, as manufacturing flaws go, that is probably not one that would actually happen. It's off now, and it's on that paper towel. Okay, well, I'm managing to move along very slowly. That's pretty cool. And um, while I'm painting these last half dozen torpedoes, dur aluminium, I can tell you a little bit about Dyson Dungeons, which what I can tell you is that when you're painting the same color onto the same color, the, the difference between single-coated and second-coated is 
really small, which means that it's very hard to tell if I'm painting the same one like over and over again, which I think I'm doing. Painting the next one. I like, you know, walking into a room and trying to remember why. If that hasn't started for you, it will at some point, and then you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Yeah, so here I am, like, totally losing this one. I was working on this one. There's a little bit of, like, a scar on this one. I remember that. That was the second one in line. Yep. Walk <clears throat> into a room and get distracted by something and then can't remember why you walked in and then you you do this thing that distracted you and then you walk out and then you remember why you walked in in the first place and all that kind of stuff you know anyway the the problem with this arrangement on the sticky tack is that although it, you know it holds the torpedoes well and it looks kind of weird, which is nice. But it's also easy to lose track of what's been done and what hasn't been. Yes, Dyson Dungeons. Dyson Dungeons is, in fact, a Dungeons and Dragons group. A group of friends and relatives came together to play Dice Dungeons and Dragons. And this is in a world that our dungeon mistress Alexis put together. Extremely elaborate and interesting and fun place to play. and decided, you know, with COVID and whatever, let's stream it. Because people do that. And so we started streaming it. And continue to this day, three Sundays a week at two with live chat. And then, uh, I'm glad you're relaxed. And then <laughs> available on YouTube and as a podcast. So if you haven't listened to any of our um or watched any of the episodes of our Dungeons and Dragons campaign, you're very, very strongly encouraged to do that. Um, just looking at the little dot I put on there and yeah, I guess that's okay. It's big enough to see, but it's not too big to be weird looking. And then uh, there's, it's like there's a little flaw in the paint there. I'm gonna fix that like right away. Cause I'm just, I'm just looking at it and I saw that it's this uh, dark blue color. I'm not even gonna bother shaking it because there's just, yeah, oh boy. Yeah, I am going to bother shaking it. It's just all separated out over the last couple of weeks. Um, but I'm just going to do this instead of using the Vortex Stirrer because I've got... There's this tiniest little dot that just needs to be made blue. That I saw that I'm fixing. 
because painting. That was right when you when the submarine's put together. This is the side that shows. So I didn't want that there. Um, yeah, I'm not going to be washing any of these things. I'm just leaving them all the flat colors because this is this model is more impressionistic than realistic in a lot of ways. In some ways, there's huge detail, like on this bit here. And in other ways, it just isn't anything at all um, realistic about it. So now I'm going to, since this has to be multi-coated, I'm going to paint the first layer. I need to check something on the box top just a second. I'm going to be painting the bed frames. So the bed frames. You just need to put this closer. I'll keep referring to it. Sorry. Well, I managed. I remembered to get this thing. This is the hull of the submarine. Okay, and this is the sail up here. This is the part that will be painted green uh, because that's the background color for what we're doing here. Um, this bit here, way up in front, this is where the torpedo room is gonna go and it gets inserted into that. Okay, which is kind of weird, but that's how it's done. Uh, the rest of this, all of the other pieces are put on um, bulkheads and platforms that just go right against it, which is why you get all this detail on the hull here. And up here, there's actually little bits of ladders. So after this is painted green and it dries, uh, those ladders will need to be highlighted. And then the outside, um, this whole thing, that's a light of some sort to paint that. Uh, this whole thing is going to be painted this dark gray color, nice flat dark gray, instead of just a shiny plastic. Need this for the next step. I'm going to be using, the box top shows this brown has a little red in it, so I'm using red brown to paint the, uh, wow. Well. <laughs> paint the bed frames. So the sail assembly is really kind of challenging. If you can see this, there's, this goes at the very top. This is the outside of the submarine here. And then there's these three other layers, right? With these tubes that go through. These tubes are cemented down here. That's cemented there, but then it pokes up to the top here. And that's the top of a hatch. Um, a staircase actually gets glued on to this one. That's where the, if I bothered with the little sailors, there would be one guy sticking its head up through the hatch. And then these snorkels and periscopes slide all the way through all of these and that whole thing has to be kind of put together held loosely it's just flopping all over the place and then it's glued cemented into these slots on the sail and once that's done that's where the cement goes those glue bits it's supposed to it's supposed to hold okay i don't know if that's actually going to happen or not. Let's see. On the models that I've seen for sale where they started it, that was never done very well. Okay. Um, the bed frames, this outside part is painted green. The bed frames are 
the back back here, the insides of this, these edges. Okay, and you can see the raised sheets, those get painted white. So all of this bit, these bits, painted uh, this red brown. The bulkhead. Um, the outside of this, like here, and along the bottom, and the ladder, this you don't see, this is actually glued in to, this is where the cement goes into the bulkhead. This, this bar here supposedly is holding up the fire extinguishers there. Okay, that goes across the top. After these are, you know, I'll show you how this goes. Third it there, in there, and that goes across like that. So the very outside of all of this is painted that green color that is the same color as the rest of this. And if we're using the box top as the color guide, there we go. You can see where that is. And then the floor is painted a different color. That floor is the same as the floor color all through the rest of this, you know, the dining hall and the officer's meeting room, and the control the bunk room. Guessing these are officer's bunks because they're only too high and there's lockers. And I'm guessing these aren't because they're down in steerage, right? Anyway, uh, yeah. So what I'm doing is I'm painting this brown color now. And I'm not going to, even with a fine brush, I'm not going to be able to get in there without getting onto the surface of where the sheets are going. Um, but well, anyway, we'll just do what we can here and see how it goes. I might use a little finer brush. No, I'm not. Yeah, this ladder is held down with contact cement, which is still flexible, okay? Uh, let's see, yep. So it's still flexible, but it holds, and so I just keep bumping it and it keeps moving. Including that bit in there is a different color. What to do? Just for consistency of color is, and I, I'm going to do that, is I'm going to paint the bed sheets. I'm going to paint all of this as brown, including the bed sheets, because I'm not sure when I paint the bed sheets how far down I'm going to be able to get into that. And I'm going to be painting white over this.
And so if it all starts out the same color, then as I, when I paint the white sheets, um, I'll be starting with the same base. And so if I can't reach apart, you know, because it's just too distant, like back here, at least the base color will be consistent. I don't see any real downside to that. These paints don't dissolve each other, really. So I'm not worried about the white, the brown leaking through the white after it's dried. I'm concerned about being no prim primer spots showing. This is one of those, rotate it all around, make sure the surfaces are covered kind of situations. I can tell right off that, um, good idea, this, this isn't getting painted here. Paint where the floor is too, I'm gonna paint this all around and then Put an overcoat on them. Oh, yeah, the tops. I haven't thought about that. You won't, unless you rotate the model later, you're not going to see that. But the tops of the bunk should be painted also. Or you could say the bottoms of the bunks because. The, the bottom of one is the top of the other. I don't know what... how people manage to get themselves assigned to this area, but I have to say that being in bunks three high stuck against the outside hull of the submarine in the torpedo room and you have to climb this ladder like this tall ladder it is pretty tall it's like oh seven or eight feet given the size of the little guys that come with this you have to from the platform below you have to climb that high up to this tiny little walkway and then somehow get into your bunk and each one has an advantage and a disadvantage the top bunk uh, you know at least seems to have a little bit of clearance above it compared to these the middle bunk looks really uncomfortable you could barely get in there making sure all the surfaces are covered here. The colors that are left here, there's a little bit of floor along here and in there that's painted a different color. And then all the bed sheets. The, that'll be a thing, getting those done. Okay, um, the edges down here and along here and the inside of the ladder, I'm going to be painting that green color and there too, the bottoms and the edge and that because that's the base color of the hull of, of the, of this, well, the base color of the bulkheads, I guess I'd call it. 
Um, and then, I, you know, the, the ladder doesn't have openings in it. It just has these raised things. So this will all be painted green. And then I'll use the, the felt tip pen to uh, mark those. So this has got to dry. I'll let that dry. I'm going to be using this paint later, but I'm noticing that it's um, thick. I'm going to be putting some thinner in it because it, I'm hoping that that uh, levels out as it dries, but the paint is a little gummier than I would like. It will now be thinner. That's why they call it thinner. Next time. Well, you know, there, I don't. Oh, you know, oh, those are two really good ideas. There are, in fact, hams in this model. I don't know if you've been paying attention to it or not. But there are several hanging hams in the in the galley. And it would be possible. It would be possible to cut one of those off of the hanging rack and uh, put it next to the bunk. Now, the idea of painting posters. Hmm. OK, so you tell me how you do that. I thought I painted that pretty well, but um, I'm going to let this dry, but here, here that's not painted well. Like the whole edge, I don't know whatever happened there, but it didn't get covered well, so I'm going to have to touch that up. Um, getting posters in there, I don't think I can do that. So what I'm going to do now, and I'm waiting for that to dry for the next steps, is I'm going to get out my my head magnifier. using one and a half. I'm going to try the two, see how that goes. The reason I'm doing this is I'm going to attempt to um, draw in the ladders in the escape hatch and the access panel in the sail. Definitely our larger use this is uh, yeah, that could be done. Why don't you start working on that? Okay, so I'm going to use this really fine-tipped pen here, and you can see it. I'm going to be reaching in. And making an effort to um,
these are kind of built into they're just built into the wall I think I need to just to make it look like a ladder I need to do that to this along this side here Otherwise, you'd see the rungs and you wouldn't know. Okay, so I'm going to say that this, first of all, that I'm having a really hard time focusing here. Except for that tiny dot that I got out there, and I have to touch that up maybe. But that, can you see that? There, it looks like a ladder. I think that worked out okay. And then there's a little dot that I need to uh, touch up with that other paint, with the bone white. Now there's another one in here. quiet here this is for some reason even though it's bigger it's just much harder to get to We're touching up The other one worked really well. I thought this one would be a lot easier because it's a bigger surface and it's raised higher, but it's not at all.
It's not terrible. Um, but I think what I need, what I'm going to have to do is, um, the touching up is mainly on the outside, like down onto the edges where it's kind of ragged. I think the horizontal, the horizontal things, the, the step ladder rungs are not too bad. I think I, I can fix this, but it's, it turned out to just be just messier than I thought it would be. This other one, this other one that looked like it would be much harder, it turned out pretty well. Anyway, I'll, um, I'll work on that a little bit later. Let's see how... Since killing the battery. Um, beds are doing here. Okay, not too bad. There needed there was still some touch up that needed to be done on this though. same brush because it's a fairly large surface area um, what I found was that just in places that showed I mean they, they show here that the uh, just I didn't paint it I didn't get painted so I'm just rotating this again Yeah, thinning the paint was a good idea. It's much better now. These outer parts get painted that green color. I should probably just make it a point of testing the paint before I use it. Just for consistency. The ink dries pretty quickly, so I'm going to do the touch-up on these fairly soon. Um, while I'm waiting for the, that to dry, I'm going to start on some of the detail of uh, this beast. Yeah. So I'm going to start with the easy part. And get the steel paint out. Paint the uh, the doors, torpedo hatches.
there's a lot of itty bitty little nooks and crannies in in the torpedo hatches so i'm going to use a very small brush even though they're relatively speaking a fairly large surface area um just to make sure i get the paint into them You can see even on this, that's the chrome, that's the duraluminum, and that's the steel, just how much darker it is. Yeah, that clock face. It's amazing. These dials have uh, little pointers and things on them. I'm going to be using that uh, very, very fine felt tipped pen. to do is figure out which parts are the serious metal parts like these are for sure these I'm looking at the one that's open hinge put that whole thing in John like things that hold the hatch together um just connectors for the wires ain't that bit steel too i'm not sure what it is but it is going to be part of the steel i'm doing one of these there's three closed ones and one open the paint down onto the surface that will be painted green painting up to it but I'm not sure quite where the paint will go okay now that's the prototype detail here is just incredible I mean I'm keeping it on camera pretty much but I'll hold it up see if the camera will focus on it when I'm done and of course this will all be buried up inside the hull of the submarine you won't be able to see it but I'll know it's there and since it's here I'm just I'm making an effort to uh, make sure that you know it's potentially visible. But even if I decide that some of these things I'm painting are actually parts of like control boxes or something later, we can always paint over it. It's the one that's open. It's tempting to um, 
the torpedo slid partially into this open one, but the none of the torpedo racks when I when I did a test positioning, none of the torpedo racks actually lined up with the open hatch. I mean, obviously, you know the the real things are like on hydraulics or chains at least. You know, I can move them around. But as this model is uh, produced, they they aren't so. The back, nothing that will never be seen, other than that needs to be dark. But I'm getting the insides of the uh, the tube where they show. The steel is a good color. You can see that it, it shows as a very nice metallic, um, but it's quite dark. So it's not like there's this, all this big shiny stuff showing here. Okay, now I'm just giving this a, one more look to make sure that the things I decided to paint steel on each one are painted steel on each one. The hinges, I mean the bolts that hold it on, these are the hinges. Well, you can always come back to it, but that's that's that bit so far. Do is just so that I know where they are. It's the clock here. Needs or and some dots in them. Okay, you know, they're painting these white, and then the rims, um, painting probably black. Might use a felt tip pen for that. Which is here. All these junction boxes. You know, I'm thinking the junction boxes, they they I might just say the the, the cabling, I think I might just say that was just painted the same color as the bulkhead. I might try to highlight that with the pen. I'm not sure how that'll work. I might give that a go, but the junction boxes might be a different shade of green. Yeah, I'll have to look at the greens. I'm using a light green. I don't want it to be too contrasty, but I'll look at the color palette li a little later. Um, but I'm going to paint the um, the dials white, and that's the same color as I'm using for the sheets. So I might wait for that. 
What I'm going to do first, though, is I'm going to do the touch-up on these guys. This is the color I've been using for, this is this color, the Torpedo Racks and the uh, Pneumatic Tubes for the snorkels and things. This one is not too bad, there's, this, there's just this tiniest little dot, I've got dark there, pushing up on it. Otherwise, this ladder, you know, I think in the, given the level of detail and my ability to work with it, is, um, it looks pretty good. That ladder worked out fine. This one just didn't. Um, even though it was easier, it was, it should have been easier. It was raised higher. And the lines are broader. Just for some reason, it was next to impossible to, uh, to reach easily with the pen. And so the outside line of the ladder is ragged. This side, there's just two little dots that are making it look a little ragged. Sometimes I find that the touching up, it looks like there's a lot, and then you get to it, and it's just, there's just little teeny little dots that make a big difference in appearance. You know, I mean, the edge is still kind of ragged, but it's better. Really teeny stuff here. Even I cut off the bottom of that. So I'm going to get the pen back out again. And uh, try to do a better job right along the edge there. I painted on too much and I cut off the bottom of the ladder. So I'll have to play with this a little bit. But I think I can get it. You know, it doesn't look too bad right now. It doesn't look terrific. But it's, it's not bad. Okay. Well, I'll have to come back in a little bit with the black pen and work on that ladder again. Okay, um, 
the next bit is here is painting the floor and the floor is like right here and in there there isn't very much of it now I get the lines right so um, I think I can do it without these glasses I need to look at my color chart and see what color I'm actually using. Okay. I'm using this color. And we will start putting this paint on. Consistency is good. Let's find out. Much chatting today, is there? Mm -hmm. Part of it is because I'm just painting little bits of stuff. You know, part of it is, well, we had a weather front move through. And to be real honest about it, um, it kind of like a, I'll call it a sinus headache anyway. Yeah, everything up behind my nose is a little congested and a little headachey. Not that I want to whine about that, it's just that it is an explanation for, uh, you know, uh, not feeling real chatty today, but uh, let's see. I wanted it. What was I talking about on Monday? I think I started talking about Tom Terrific. The greatest hero ever. Take that Batman and Hulk and everybody else. Do nothing, because Tom Terrific is the greatest hero ever. How do we know that? Tom Terrific tells us that himself. In his theme song. I'm Tom Terrific, the greatest hero ever. And why is he terrific? Because he's so clever. I don't know what cleverness has to do with being the greatest hero ever. Probably because it rhymes with ever. I don't know. When they wrote the lyrics, which came first? Ever or clever? You know, when you're coming up with rhymes. Even great songwriters had troubles with rhymes. Like uh, back in the 60s, what was it? Feeling Groovy, I think that's the title of the song. in this song about feeling groovy and uh, to this this point in the song for some reason 
I'll decide to talk to the lamppost. It was the 60s, what can you say, right? So it's hello, lamppost, what you knowin'? How you keep your flowers growing? That's kind of a stretch already, right? But the, uh, the next part really gives it away is because you know that the songwriter needed another verse but just wasn't getting anywhere, right? So it's hello, lamppost, what you know, and how do you keep your flowers growing? And then they say, have you got some rhymes for me? So this tells you right away how desperate they are. Um, to get this this one lyric written that they're talking to a lamppost and asking for the lamppost if the lamppost has any rhymes the very next uh, the very next sound is doo 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 seriously that's it hello lamppost what you know and how you keep your flowers growing Apparently, there are flowers planted around the base of this lamppost, which is done in some places. Have yeah, you got some rhymes for me? Do 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 do. So the answer to that is guess not. No rhymes for you. So this paint doesn't cover that well. I might have to do a second coat fairly carefully after it dries. And just looking at it, uh, a little bit ragged on the edge here. I might get the brown back out again. Looks like it went up on the side a little bit. This one's good. But yeah, it uh, just didn't cover that well, and I was concerned about that. Some of these just don't, the yellowish ones. In fact, almost all of them that I've used have required two coats. Waiting for that to dry to get the second coat on, and then I'll touch up the brown. I'll touch up the brown before I put the second coat on, because it'll be dry. Is I'm going to get out the uh, very fine tip pen again. 005 and see what I can do to repair this. And we'll magnify our head again. Yeah, so... There you go. back. I'll take it away. That's not too bad. Then make this black again here. It's not perfect. Okay. By, by any means, I would say it's This is, this is in the B minus range. For some reason, this ladder to, to be a more difficult challenge than the other ones. But there, you can tell it's a ladder. Okay. On the uh, on the inside of this uh, access tunnel thing, and I'm just not going to mess with it anymore because if I do, it will um, make it worse. At some point, you just say. 
that's as good as I can do. There. Um, let's see. Yeah. Oh, geez. Good thing that's flexible. Okay, so this is this clearly needs um, a touch up here because as I'm looking at it, that line got ragged. So I'm going to touch that up and, with the brown paint, and then since the the other one's drying, we're dry. Touch that up before I do the second coat. It's really easier with these on. Thing all badly there. This doesn't take much to make a line look ragged. You know, it looks ragged in the other direction. Yeah, so I look at it this way, it looks okay. I look at it this way, and it looks not okay. I'm gonna count, um, see this side looks not bad. That line looks pretty decent, uh, but this one, maybe it's just the angle of the brush or something. But yeah, everything needs a second coat. Especially clear when you look at it through these glasses. bunk top of the one before that. it's not painted yeah the sheets are going to need multiple coats as well when I start painting them white I want to get the floor first and the floor just needs it needs another coat that looks pretty scabby but that's got to dry um, what I'm going to do next is paint torpedo warheads Torpedo warheads. Oh, it's break time. Lucky me. Bring these guys back online here. Set for this stuff away. The ladder is okay now. Um, that, I'm going to work on dials. When I get the white paint out, I'm going to paint the dials. Okay, and then I'm going to, I think, do the green base coat 
And then these control surf boxes, I'm going to pick a different color just so you can see them again. And um, paint those in after the green is dried. This green, this one being painted green isn't going to be too hard. Fire extinguishers and staircase just need to be done. Um, the staircase is green on the outside. Uh, this is where it's cemented down, so that's the only surface I won't paint. You'll probably put that on a sticky tack like this. And then maybe touch up the green a little bit later. And then the whole inside of this is painted green. That'll require two coats just to make it look even. Um, but these, there's 12 torpedoes, and each of those has a red warhead that I will need to paint be painting when I get back from break. Uh, yeah, well, I think, yeah, this is just going to go the other direction, isn't it? They're going to have to go back in the sticky tack after I paint them, because if I lay them down, then the red will uh, rub off. So take them out of the sticky tack here. Celebrate the duraluminum color. Looks better with the second coat. It's satisfactory. As I'm moving along here, the parts just, they feel like they're getting smaller and smaller and smaller. <laughs> I'm going to put this back to a uh, more or less smoother surface so that I can stick stuff into it. But yeah, I'll be painting those red, um, the first coat anyway, and then that dry, and while that's drying for the second coat, I'll touch up the floor on this. Then, since the floor theoretically at least doesn't touch the sheets, let's see, get some white paint out and start painting sheets and dials. But first, um, yeah, I'm gonna find a red. Yeah, you can tell there's a magnet on the base of this, right? As the everything metallic started glomming onto it. That paint. It's nicely settled. That's going to require some major stirring. That's always fun. I'm going to do that now uh, before the break and then come back and do it again. I've got a lot of green painting to do after I do some detail stuff. The sheets basically and the dials. But if I get these warheads done and I can get two coats on, I may be able to um, attach them to the racks. I'd like to get that done today one way or the other. Today, even if it means um, not getting green on some of these things because the if I use the Gorilla Glue stuff it just it has to set for a long time and if I do that near the end of the stream today then then I can just let them sit there We'll stir this again when I come back and break. Let's see, I want these, I'm gonna have to get something underneath these so that they, um, 
I don't know how much that blue will sag, but I can just see them kind of rolling off. So I, I'm going to want these all horizontal. And I'll play with that later. But red paint coming up later. These guys, these are all chromey now. And the other thing I need to do is the tips of all of these will be painted dark gray. Okay, the part that sticks above the surface will be painted dark gray. And I should be able to do that quickly a little bit later. They stand up in the holes. I won't need to use the clips. I'll just stick them in the holes of this wooden block. Talking to myself as I'm reminding myself of the things that I need to do here to um, get the torpedo room and the sail moving along. But I'm being reminded that I need a break and I will be back about 1230. Thanks for hanging in there and we'll see you again soon. Okay, well, break's over. Um, pretty much on time. And we will recap. What I've got to do yet today is a whole lot of stuff. As you can see, I seem to have accomplished almost nothing in the better part of two hours. Good for me. Um, I did put some ladders on the insides of these things. I did paint a little bit of stuff here. I got some paint splattered all around here. I need to put a second coat on the floor and then start painting the sheets, okay? White, and when I get the white out, um, I'll also be doing some dials and clock faces and stuff on the bulkhead here. Um, but in order to make the appearance of some progress, at least, I'm going to be painting the warheads of these torpedoes uh, red. Probably it'll require two coats, so I'll get a first coat on. Get the paint stirred. So I'm going to be painting them by holding on to it and then sticking them in the sticky tag here. Just to hold them point up while they are drying. And at some point, uh, yeah, I might even attempt to glue them onto these uh, torpedo racks. I haven't really been chatting. I haven't been wasting time. Um, I, have, I am just, I have to say, I'm just sort of baffled you know, to myself about how I've managed to get almost nothing done um, this morning. That's a demonstration of um, not accomplishing much. Okay, so we're getting this along here. We were getting this along here pretty well. And then that stopped for some reason. I'm painting it down to the first of the two indentations. Paint just get off the brush differently? I'm not, I don't know. Be able to do this in one coat. It'd be nice if that worked. It takes a lot less time to do it once than to do it twice.
You know, that doesn't look too bad. So I'm just sticking these in here just so that they dry without laying them down. Technique of the go. Just slipped a little bit and it went too far. Get onto that little middle ring. To come back and fix that. Yeah, I'll just plan on doing a dirt al aluminium touch up on these because it's probably not going to be the only the only time that that happened. A dozen of these things will probably go wrong more than once. And if it doesn't rotate smoothly, then I'm trying to get the paint into the first groove, but not onto the surface of that little ring. That way it will give a nice uniform look. There. Mostly okay. this larger brush even though maybe it's not the finest control but I'll give it kind of a smooth surface around it so that one this one is pretty close to looking like two did these when I was like 11 years old or whatever. I either was better at it and had a steadier hand or something, or I didn't care as much about how it looked as being um, persnickety, i use that word. a little touch up and trying to get it, get it right the first time. You know, it's drying nice and flat. It looks it looks okay. What I'll probably end up doing is getting the dual aluminum out again and I can see that, you know, there's just little places where the paint went a little too far that didn't didn't see it from one side that you can see it from the other. We get these painted. Let them dry a bit while well, they're drying. I'm going to put a second coat onto the floor of the bunk section.
Kind of weird, doesn't it? But it holds them. Painting these and discovering that the line isn't perfectly straight because, in fact, the little grooves aren't perfectly straight. The kind of contrast this situation here, where all it is is a couple of little grooves in the plastic. and contrast that with the incredible detail on the torpedo hatch bulkhead. And you go, just, how can that be on the same model? But it is. I never did get around to saying much about Tom Terrific, who, by his own estimation, is the greatest hero ever. Terrific's superpower is that um, he's a shapeshifter. No, well, we could say not a changeling, okay? because in D&D, &D, the changeling can turn into like other, what, humanoids or something, right? Same sort of body plan thing with, with some leeway. But Tom Terrific was a shapeshifter more in the vein of Odo from Star Trek, because um, he could be as he says, I can be what I want to be. And if you'd like to see, just follow me. Because he could be a plane up high, a diesel train go roaring by, a bumblebee or a tree. It's me. Change into anything, including significant changes in volume. Okay, which is pretty clever, I guess, if you could pull it off. But yeah, he's kind of a shapeshifter, I guess, in the classic Star Trek's Odo kind of way. Um, kind of creepy when you think about it, I mean... You sit down on, you're just walking along and you decide that, eh, I'd like to take a little rest and you sit down on like a park bench. And it turns out to be Tom Terrific. Yeah, it'd be pretty creepy. But I guess, you know, if you're using it only for good as opposed to being, um, you know, evil, I suppose you could do lots of evil things if you could change into anything. But anyway, yeah, Tom Terrific apparently only did it for good because as, as he continued to say in his theme song, when you're in trouble, I'm there on the double. And from Atlantic to Pacific, they know Tom Terrific. So it was... Um, just 
you know, limited to this continent, maybe? No, no, I mean any continent, because um, even Eurasia goes from Atlantic to Pacific, so it wouldn't... I think we all assumed that it was just North America, from Atlantic to Pacific. But it could be, uh, it could be anywhere. Does all the continents go from Atlantic to Pacific? You know, I guess not technically. I guess Africa goes from Atlantic to the Indian Ocean. I'll have to take that back in reviewing my memory of that collection of geography. That wouldn't be Atlantic to Pacific. And, you know, if you're looking at, you'd have to combine Europe and Asia for that to work. But, you know, some people call it Eurasia. The continental divide is kind of an arbitrary thing. It's a mountain range. We don't break up North or South America into two different continents because they have mountain ranges like they do that supposedly separates Europe from Asia. Oh, some sort of European colonial conceit. Nobody's talking in chat because I'm not looking up as I'm focusing intently on painting red warheads onto these torpedoes. too far on that one. It was like the... Almost like the, the indentation got shallower or something. I had to blame the, the model print as opposed to my hand. But it looks like one coat is enough, which is a pleasant surprise. And... Um, Right now, I've only got a couple that need touch-up, which is also a pleasant surprise. This stream has me just painting. Well, the closest... The closest it comes to just painting is when I'm doing dungeon tiles. You know, like when I was doing 12 dozen sewer floors this last week. <clears throat> that was almost all painting. Uh, very little um, procrastination or, or digression. Because it was like, okay, I'm painting everything one color and then I'm touching it up in that color and then I'm putting a wash on it and I don't and I'm intentionally globbing the wash on so it's uneven which makes it even easier that the yellow submarine it's interesting that you mentioned that because I actually have and I can see it from here I'll pull it out So if you really want that, um, okay. So that's the last of those. I'm gonna cap up the red here and let those dry just a bit before I pull the duraluminium out again. I'm just gonna kind of wander from one color to the next here as things dry. And, uh, yeah. Bristles. The bristles just start wandering instead of coming to a nice point. Okay. Um, since you mentioned Yellow Submarine, I am fat. Accumulation, uh, endless accumulation of models that I never got around to building because for some reason I found something else to do. There is. Uh -huh. The AMT yellow submarine model. Look at that. 
with all the yellow submarine model pieces. It even comes with with um, submarine uh, stickers. They're not even details. They're stickers that go on to the yellow submarine. But yeah, there it is. There's uh, there's the hull. Inside is the original packaging and um, little bits, including little flowers and control surfaces and stuff, hatchways. The problem with the yellow submarine is that uh, it needs to be painted all in glossy, and that that needs to be airbrushed on. Yeah, can't really show it to you there. See, everything's glossy. There's orange and yellow. <coughs> There's more orange than yellow, I guess, in the submarine, and white, and they're all glossy, and when you build it, they should all be shiny and flawless like that, and so I can't brush it on. That would all, Those would all have to be airbrushed on. You know, this, these are just incised on the model, so those would have to be very carefully taped off. I don't know, whoever built this was really good at it. So yeah, there is a yellow submarine. You're probably not surprised. Yeah, no, no, where can I put it? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so here, this is what the torpedo heads, warheads look like. Now I'm going to get this paint back out again. It's, orangish, brownish kind of thing, and try to fix the floor, because it looks really, doesn't look good. I'm going to use a big brush. This is a very large brush for this sort of thing, but it's got a really fine point on it. And what I'm hoping is that um, I can get it into the corners and make a nice line but that it'll also carry enough paint so that uh, it will provide good even coverage because I don't have that right now. So we'll, we'll see how this goes. I'm hoping I can get this paint to work because there's a lot of there's a lot of floor area that's done in this color on this model. Hoping that, just like with the uh, the bone white that I used on the torpedo racks, that with a second coat, it just ends up looking good. It, it might. So anyway, yes, Tom Terrific, look it up. I believe that those were cartoon shorts that were shown on the old Captain Kangaroo show. I think Tom Terrific was part of part of that. Tom Terrific was done solely as black and white line drawings. And kind of unique that way. So it was like, you know, with most animation cells, they're, they're lined in and then uh, the, the colors are applied within, you know, it was like coloring book coloring within the lines. And terrific, that step never happened. It was only the line drawings.
better than it was. Be one of these things that after it dries, I will just say, that is good enough. So it looks a little scabby on the front here, but that's going to be painted the green color. Um, I need to do a little brown touch up. I touch the paint there, and then when I look at the top here, there are some sections that just weren't covered well. Otherwise, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, once it dries, you know, and it looks more uniform, it's leveling out pretty well, that that will be sufficient. this on the white. It's got a really nice point on it. And the white, the sh what I'm talking about are the sheets. Okay. Which if you look at the very top of bunk, it's a pillow and a sheet and kind of around the edges. So I might just use this brush to give that a go. I'm going to not touch up the brown yet because I'm, I'm just, just guessing that um, I'm going to have to do some brown touch-up after I get the white painted. I'm not sure why I think that. Probably because it's inevitable. There it is. And then this edge needs to be straightened out of there. Let me get the white paint out and I'll give this a good stir. And before I mess with this too much, because the, the beige paint is still kind of wet. What I'm going to be painting is, are the dial faces on this. There's a clock, and there's the dials up there, and there's one for each of the torpedo tubes, and this one is partially hidden behind the open hatch. Okay, And each of them has a ring around the outside. Um, I think I'm going to try to do that with the black felt tip pen. But first of all, I'm going to work on getting the. Um, oh, let's hope this paint works. Test this on something. thin enough, but it's uh, you can see that it does not cover very well. That brush. Let's try this brush. No, that's almost worse. Um, yeah, it's going to require at least two coats. We've got another white paint. That part is never going to show, so I felt okay painting on that. It's been primed, but um, it goes way in the back. It's between the two hulls. I want to try this color. I am going to first, though, uh, one of those little metal balls in here to make sure it's stirred well because it's been sitting around for a while. 
Sorry. Once again, I am searching for things. Set aside <laughs> somewhere carefully so I could find them again when I wanted them. It's probably right in front of me. But I can't see it. There. They weren't exactly in front of me. They were slightly off to the side. But Tom Terrific, yes, the greatest hero ever because he is a changeling and can be whatever he wants to be. It's a bit of a narcissistic thing too, isn't it? I am the greatest hero ever and I can be what I want to be. When you're young and you're watching that, you don't think about these things, but... Things are supposed to, like, pop right off. There we go. I'm starting to loosen up. Anyway, yeah, Tom Terrific thought a lot of himself. And then uh, it could turn into anything. He had a sidekick. They always do, he, you know. Just like uh, Super Chicken here. Super Chicken had Fred the Vegetarian Lion, who mixed his super sauce for him and kept him out of trouble, more or less, most of the time. Um, Tom Terrific had Mighty Manfred the Wonder Dog. Mighty Manfred the Wonder Dog was asleep almost the entire time. That was, that was Mighty Manfred's superpower, I think, is not being awake. And there's some days where that seems, you know, kind of maybe it'd be a pleasant thing. So we'll see what this white, how this white works. There is yet another white, another Viejo, I think. Uh, this is a game color, dead white. I think we have another Viejo white. That one on the test, when I tested it, was covered even less well than this. Um, okay, well, one thing I can say about this is it it doesn't it covers a little better, okay, but it's much whiter. For some reason, that white isn't even white. This is this is going to take a couple of coats. And actually, I think so it doesn't show too many brush marks. I might want to put some thinner in it. It's a full bottle, but um, it's thick. So there's, there's not much room in here for thinner, but I'm going to uh, do it anyway, just because I want it to uh, level better. But that's going to work better as white than the other white, which isn't showing white at all. In there. It's going to need a major shaking. Okay, so I'm going to shake this up. I think what I can do now, though, is um, the torpedo warheads have dried. So I'm going to get out the dual aluminum paint again and t just do little touch-ups. There isn't much. I'm going to go around them and touch them up where they need to be. And okay, okay. <laughs> Having trouble seeing the clock without my glasses. 
when it gets to be like around maybe a half hour from now, depending on if I get anywhere at all with the rest of this stuff, is I'm going to glue the, or yeah, glue the um, torpedoes onto the torpedo racks, because I want to get that done today, even if nothing else happens. So, do aluminum. be done here. Here's the bitty brush and just pull these out one at a time and inspect them. And these are just tiny little dots of this silvery paint. I might just need to do some touching up on the red too. It's like just some spots there that aren't evenly coated. So I'll pull the red paint out again and, and just give them a quick go over. Like here, I have no clue why that isn't covered. So yeah, these will need some more touching up with the red. I was hoping to not have to do that, but yep, that hope is dashed. I'll be able to do that just right away because none of the spots that are being touched up are touching the silver ring yet. Yeah, that red paint looked like it was covering really well, but then just looking at it, it's not it's not even. All in said and done about this model, I'm going to say it's going to be best viewed from about five feet because a lot of it is, as I keep saying, impressionistic. In some cases, there's just hyper detail, and in other cases, it's like it gives you the suggestion of something. Do 
torpedoes look, you know, the red is just fine. Others, it's not so good. Looks like that just never even got painted as I'm rotating this. That'll be, that'll have to require a little bit of care in touching that up. But this one is very poorly done. I mean, wow, very bad. Oh, you're looking up Tom Terrific. Yeah, the jingle the jingle went on. I think, as I recall, that the jingle was just about all there was of, of a Tom Terrific episode. And then there was three minutes of uh, not terribly exciting inaction, right? As So what did Tom Terrific turn into during this episode for you? Because... You have to turn into something. That's there's no point in being Tom Terrific. He can turn into a, a jet and a diesel train and a tree and a bumblebee. He can turn into anything. He can be what he wants to be. This whole the whole thing might just be kind of like a fantasy. It might not even be real. It might just be him imagining. Well, that's important. Car's no good if it's not working. Okay, so we'll try this red again. Um, touch them up and. Put them back in the sticky tack. I was tempted to use glossy red on these, but that tends to be even less uniform in its coverage. Beginning to give myself the impression that um, this is none of this is ever going to get done. Because if you look at where I was at the start of the stream and you compare it to where I am now, um, we could easily. Reach the conclusion that I did maybe about 20 minutes worth of work here in close to two and a half hours, three and a half hours of 
thinking around. I'm sure who will point that out. Our maintenance, preventive stuff, you know, getting on top of things, preventing, keeping problems from happening rather than fixing them after. That's, that's very good. That they do a lot of that on the submarine too. Even on these torpedoes, they probably have to like take them apart every now and then and rebuild parts uh, parts of the inside and whatever. Okay, I think they're turning out okay though. I mean, uh, the second coat of the dual aluminum looks good on them. Uh, and so there's still some mold marks showing, but. For the most part, they're, they're okay. They have the George Washington name, you know? So not surprisingly, we kind of figured it would be, is that the bunk beds, the most troublesome part of all of this, just because of the clearances and the colors that are being used. At least these are getting done, and I'm going to test the Gorilla Glue a little bit later before I actually use it. So I want to make sure that, um, that I can get small enough spots on the places where I want it. And I'm not terribly concerned about it taking forever to set up. You know, it's not an issue. This will be like the last thing I do, stream. Red brush against red paint. Where is the tip of the brush issue? Here. The, the red paint it hadn't gone quite far enough. So the aluminum color on this one. It's careless. Almost had a problem there. Narrowly averted disaster. This is the one that looks like it had parts of it had just never even been painted the first time. Poorly done, this one.
turned into a rickshaw that flew halfway around the world? Was that some sort of like Asian racist thing that they were doing on the show back in the 1960s? You know, in order to fit into whatever generic, stereotyped Asian culture, you just became a rickshaw. I bet that happened, right? To Egypt? Turned into a rickshaw to go to Egypt? Okay. Was someone trying to steal a sphinx or something? And he had to go protect it and defend it. And I suppose, you know, we would expect that, right? What would we know about rickshaws in Egypt? It's not here. And if it was on the Captain Kangaroo show, it had to be all right. Almost done thinking around with these torpedoes. And then what we'll do is... Uh, attempt to glue them, not cement them, I'm going to use glue, onto the torpedo racks without um, getting into a situation where I basically need to pull them all off, remove the paint, and start over. So that's, the, that's the objective for today. When I get around to doing that is to... Um, Create a situation that requires a hundred percent rework. Okay, I'm gonna get these out of the way here. Cap the red paint. And for better or worse, start spreading at least two, maybe three coat necessity white paint because none of the white paints are really blow very well. So we'll give this a stir. Okay, um, I'm looking at the clock, and I'm going to I'm going to say I lied, okay, because um, I'm not going to have time to paint these bunks in the time that's left and get the torpedoes into the racks, right? So the white paint is going to have to wait until next Wednesday. But what I can do is I keep forgetting that I I said I was going to do that. What I can do is I can paint the sections of these that protrude above the water. There's a kind of a decent dividing line. And as I said, those things should definitely not be just silver. I'm going to paint them and just set them into the holes here. It'll hold them up well enough. Put 
destroy those torpedo racks before I ever get around to using them. Okay. I'll just use this dark gray paint. This is the color of the hull. And I am doing camouflage. Portions of this is part of the snorkel, I believe. So the parts that extend above the water when they're extended. And we want them to be dark, even though it might look a little odd against the silver. We want them to be dark so that um, they're not just flashing in the sun, giving away the location of the submarine. Actually, if you look at the top of the sail, this is the very, very top of it. There's all these indentations in here. And those, these things actually set inside of them. Like this one goes in there. And this one that's uh, kind of rounded goes in there. They fit in there. And that's going to be painted the hull color. So it just makes sense that these would be as well. Get these done, I think. Reasonable amount of time. Attempting to actually do some assembly. That is to say, install torpedoes on torpedo racks. amazing how much time I am able to take painting a couple of square millimeters of surface. I'm getting really, really good at getting almost nothing done in a large amount of time. Maybe that's why people, you know, who watch this stream, like the dungeon tile ones. I think people like the dungeon tile ones because something actually gets done. as opposed to um, the perpetual, you know, I think uh, what I will do next, if I ever get around to doing anything, is uh, paint the ladders. Pass up and touch up and then retouch up. And then they just give the impression of being ladders anyway. Yeah, that kind of thing. So, but, you know, I've got a lot of time, maybe, I hope, um, to get this done well, at least well enough, so that when it's finished, it'll be uh, presentable. You know, not perfect. This is definitely not, like, professional level, um, professional level painting, because I'm just not that good. But... It's relaxing painting for those who are tending to the stream because we talk about Tom Terrific. And who, whenever I talk about one of these um, 1960s cartoons, is able to go on the internet and discover that I'm not making it up. Just how amazing things were when I was uh, when I was young and got to see all these things, right? 
We have Pokemon. We had Tom Terrific. We had Rocky and Bullwinkle. Super Chicken. That, but that's how the theme song goes. There's that chicken noise in the background. Just one more of these, and then, then it'll get really exciting. I'm going to um, test the clear, clear, the clear is the regular Gorilla Glue will expand as it sets, the, the clear doesn't, so that means that when I set the torpedoes into the torpedo racks, they should, good grief, how can I possibly do that? Really, there's this tiny little area that's painted gray, right? And if I tried to touch it, I wouldn't be able to. But as I'm trying to set this into the little holes in the wood, I managed to get my finger right on the area that was painted. Maybe, you know, we had a low pressure system come tearing through here today. I mean, I'm just going to blame it on air pressure changes. Okay. Whatever it is, whatever it is, that's the reason. Each of these is a different shape and each shape is a different function. And the instructions actually let you know which one is doing what and they and they go in specific places on the submarine as well so when i install them i have to be i have to be a little bit cautious about that okay so if you can see them you can see the effect is that uh, especially as the paint dries and it gets flat is that those won't, won't be shiny Okay, the sun will be glinting into them. What do you mean I haven't made anything up yet? You mean assembled anything? You mean lied about something? Created a fiction? Okay, so with these torpedo racks, I'm going to move stuff out of the way here and go down to the cardboard. And I've got this handy dandy paint stirrer thing here, which turns out to be just the right height for several of these, like four out of the six. If you can see that, they, uh, they lay flat, okay? Because they got prongs and things that are really very close to being flat. This one is not an issue because it's flat already. And this one just is tilted just a little bit, but I can lean it against it like that. So I, this is important because as I cement them, glue them, I don't want them wandering around due to gravity. But what I need to do here, this is a fresh bottle. Feel in here. 
Sometimes there's a seal underneath. Nope. So this is way too big for what I want. Um, I'm going to just, I'm going to do a little practice here. Uh, first of all, with these, okay. So these, it's important to do this, all right. Um, these go into the back wall like this okay like that which means that this is the front so if I put the torpedoes that way with the heads that way they'd be <laughs> aiming at the uh, back of the submarine instead of the front and they would be very hard to load into the torpedo tubes so I was just testing this because uh, yeah uh, it would have been really easy that would have been really easy to have them uh, point the wrong way so I need to make sure that they're pointed that way these guys are a little more straightforward in that these go into the back bulkhead it went like that so it's pretty clear to see that that's the uh, that's the front um, when they talked about clearance they were clearly, they were talking about these. And if these were put up too far backward, okay, if you did them in the racks too far back, when you try to glue that on or cement that on, it, um, it wouldn't fit. So this is, this is where, this is a sample here. That's where the torpedo needs to go, about like there. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to put it on here. Right, what I'm going to do is try to get stuff out of the way, make it give myself a little room, squeeze some of this into the pallet. and practice with toothpick is I want a dot, a tiny dot of this to go into the center of the rack there. didn't want to do. I don't want to get it in the front where it's going to show. So I want to get enough in there. The torpedo will stick. And we'll see if I can. Yep, that was my sample. This one here, right? that I was going to use to measure where the torpedoes go. And of course I knocked it off. So it looks like what I want is for the, yeah, there's more room. So I want the line of the warhead to be right about in the middle of the rack. So 
that is it's not enough it's not enough of the glue in there for it to make contact apparently it requires a pretty um, hefty chunk Just go glishing all over the place. It's a technical term for making a mess. Okay. If worse comes to worse. And the glue is showing too much. Like that one might be. Anyway, that's a torpedo on a rack. Is for all of them be the same distance for not be popping. There. I mean that's what that's what I'm going for here is that <clears throat> um ten more times. Oops. This Gorilla Glue is not really tacky, um, which is good because I, I need to adjust the location of the torpedoes on the rack. But not being tacky also means that um, doesn't hold up to bumping. The reason I'm rotating these is that they, uh, they have some pretty significant mold marks on them. Yeah. Even though I sanded them down quite a bit, it can still show. The other thing I'm trying not to do that I am not necessarily being successful at, which is getting the glue on my fingers.
But they look even to you. To me right now, they look about that they're all about the same. I think that's good. Now this will be a little more challenging because it's uh, oriented differently, but we will continue this. I'm like epoxy, looks like I have kind of like infinite time, relatively speaking, to get this on to its uh, desired location before it starts setting up. I think that'll be okay. Yeah, I'm glad I left uh, 15 minutes, 20 minutes to do this because it's taking 25. You would think that just setting things down would go more quickly, but no. Okay. More than half done. We are eight twelfths. Eight twelfths of the way there. That is... Six point six 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 to infinity. And we won't go into that again. We already did that shtick with the threes and the sixes before. So you know how that goes. And how disturbing that can be. So we'll let that, we'll let that not happen again. Put this up close to this one so that I can get the location adjustment right. Yeah, it's not real tacky, so it's hard to tell, you know, if it's grabbing or not. Yes, we will find out later today or tomorrow if this is working. Those torpedoes to stay on the torpedo racks and not have to redo this. But. The important thing is that something actually is getting constructed here. I mean, something is actually being assembled, which is uh, which hasn't happened yet, despite the fact that this has been what like the third one. These are now the even. Back this up to match. I'm matching up the little tabs in the back because those are what glue cement into the bulkheads. Yep, there we go. Um, 
Ta-da! There is an accomplishment of sorts in that torpedoes are set into glue on the torpedo racks. There we are. These are done and ready to be installed at some point in the near future. Maybe next Wednesday. On the bed is, you know, not too bad. It looks a little scabby, but this is going to be painted green along the front here. The floor, eh. Let's, I mean, it's a submarine floor. It looks okay. I've got a lot of work to do to try to get these bed sheets and pillows turned white, especially like in here. That's going to be a challenge, so I'll be taking that on next Wednesday and also continuing work on this bulkhead with all the detail. And what I've decided will be happening here is that I'll be doing the dials and the clock, okay, in white. I'm going to be using the fine-tipped uh, felt pen to attempt to get like the dials and the numbers and the rims. I'm going to be painting this whole thing then green. And then these can, these junction boxes, there's a lot of them. Um, just so that you can see them, I'm going to be painting those a slightly darker colored green. And one of the colors, if we can look at the color chart, This is the color that I'll be using um, for the inside of the hull and the bulkheads. It's light green. And the junction boxes, I'm actually thinking about one of this light sea gray, okay, which isn't really a green color, but to me looks like an electrical junction box color. I mean, very much so, right? This light sea gray is an older paint that I thinned down, and I think I can get it to behave enough uh, to be able to paint junction boxes everywhere. But it's it just seems, you know, we've got electrical stuff around the house, and that always seems to be the color of the boxes that that are used. Ah, oh, well, today was a, was a day, right? It was Wednesday, a front moved through. Um, got a little bit of a headache. Got something to whine about and complain about, as usual. Got to talk about Tom Terrific. Um, got torpedoes on torpedo racks. Got that done. Painted some ladders inside the escape hatch. That's pretty cool. And I would say looking back at this, given the amount of time I spent, uh, probably accomplished almost nothing. And I wonder what it was that just fell. Something was attached to my glasses and fell on the floor. And something a little shiny. Hope it wasn't important. I'm going to let these not move because the Gorilla Glue takes quite a while to set up. So they are not moving until probably the end of the day today when I need to get things ready for uh, relaxing painting minifigs on Friday. Thank you for joining Sub Wednesday. I hope you... Uh, Hope it was relaxing for you. The uh, getting almost nothing done over a long period of time seems to have been pretty effective today. Looks like I did a fine job of that. Are these lined up? Yeah. 
these torpedoes seem to be lined up with the other torpedoes. And this one definitely is not. This one is definitely further back. Which is why this Gorilla Glue is good, because it has not set up yet. These kind of pot stack on top of each other, and if they're not lined up, it's going to be really obvious. Even tiny fractions of, of like less than a millimeter, way less than a millimeter would show. Perfect, but they can't be real obviously not lined up. I think that's better. I just can't stop playing with it, right? No, probably good enough right now. If I keep messing with it, I will mess with it. Thank you for joining Submarine Wednesday. Um, relaxing painting is on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 10 until 2. I will be back on Friday working on some D&D &D minifigs that I started on Monday, and I should finish those up. Um, and if there's still time, I'll move on to another set. In the meantime, um, I want to let that glue dry, and then we'll be back next week, Wednesday, hopefully actually getting something done. Um, it is amazing how little was accomplished today. I am very, very impressed at the absence of progress. So I, I hope you are too. And I hope that uh, lack of progress was relaxing for you. And we will see you on Friday. Thank you. Bye.